Please welcome me and joining Todd Thibodeau. I'm a, I'm a proud owner of a uh, 300 eBay rating with, with no bad feedback. Whoa. <laughs> I, I have, I've never sold anything on eBay, so maybe I, should read, maybe I should read the book. Is a 300 eBay rating good? It's a little outdated, but go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> Fine. Um, so the, the, the America's other finest news source yesterday wrote a story um, talking about the onion. Um, China unable to recruit hackers fast enough to keep up with vulnerabilities in US security systems. <laughs> America's other finest news source, right? And you wrote on Pasco this morning about how we often put technology in as like this principal solution to, to, to fixing these problems. And perhaps we should think a little more about people. You want to talk a little bit about that and sort of discuss that um, people and versus technology? I think the biggest challenge has been that the individual user has been left out of the security process, whether it's increasingly in their own home environment, but, all, but definitely in the work environment, where it was the domain of the IT department to put up the firewalls, to install the antivirus software, to do everything. But as social media, even content streaming in the middle of the workday, some of those rules have been uh, relaxed within the work environment and more of the security issues have begun to come up among users and we do a lot of research on an annual basis and the number of hacks that are related to human error and not human error from the IT department but human error from a regular uh, staff person within an organization has begun to rise mm -hmm. and it's now more than 50 percent and someone clicking on a phishing email, someone bringing in a USB stick that probably had been floated around their kid's school, loaded up with, with all kinds of bad malware and viruses, gets plugged into a system, and those things become pervasive. But I think the, the thing was we've, we've let it be, people think it's only the job of the IT department to be aware of security, and it's really the job of every single person in the company today. Hmm. So how do you start building that out? How do you start building that awareness out beyond the IT department? Well, one of the things that, that we're trying to do is, is create a, a program called Cyber Secure, which is kind of a 45 to 60 minute learning. So when we all take sexual harassment, we all take EEOC training, we want to raise the level of cyber security training to that level within organizations. So that maybe every couple of years, every single person in a company would have to go through some kind of cyber training to update them on the newest issues, the newest challenges, just to remind them that it's their job to, to pay attention. So there's other programs out there that have, but we're trying to take cybersecurity to a, to a whole other level and, and try to make it something that's not scary. So a lot of the training that's been out there has been doom and gloom. You know, you, you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, bad things are gonna happen. You know, you're gonna lose your job, all these things. We're trying to make it more fun <laughs> and more informational. So that's just one thing. And then you know, down among, uh, there's lots of programs that have been targeting kids as well in schools, telling them about mostly around cyber stalkers and issues related to that. But I think we need to take a cyber awareness down to another level. So um, outside of the sort of younger education you talked about, people that are already in the workforce, uh, also obviously you all deal with people sort of coming into the workforce and actually getting those jobs. And one thing we'll talk about today is the cybersecurity sort of talent gap. Um, how do you think about building that pipeline, you know, of people to actually take those jobs and be aware and be able to do the IT and everything else? Now let's be, be clear about the, the, the cyber gap. The number of jobs that are related to really high level, like counter, intelligence, right. counter cyber, those, the number of those jobs is very small, the number of people that, that fall into those. But the number of people that work in an IT role that need to have some security awareness is really high. So we have a million open IT jobs. We have a million or 10 million people who work in IT in the US, about half in an IT company and about half in an IT role within an IT company. 40 million people worldwide working in IT. Every single one of those workers needs to have a pretty high level of cybersecurity awareness about networks, especially around mobile devices now, right. uh, not just the traditional network, what the cyber implications of the cloud. So I think um, the idea is to, to make sure that cyber awareness becomes a big part of, of every IT job. So our exams, so we certify IT professionals, and we have the, the world's leading vendor neutral IT certification group, and I'd say 25 to 30 percent of all of our exams relate to cyber now. Hmm. So even when you're taking the foundational A plus exam, 30% of the questions in that relate to cyber issues. And that's up from double. That's probably double what it was even five years ago. So it's a skills gap among everyone, not just among sort of, we think about it often in terms of those empty positions versus something, but it's really about sort of that broad-based training. Yeah, broad -based awareness. for everybody that's coming into a job. And not just the cyber warriors that are sitting in the basement at NSA 
you know, doing, uh, doing counter, counter terrorism work. Got it. Um, one other thing we'll touch on today is diversity in the IT sort of industry and diversity in the, in the cybersecurity workforce. And there's been a lot of um, studies and a lot of press recently about lack of diversity and also folks trying to sort of up their game on that score and sort of drive a more diverse workforce. What are you seeing in that space? How are people doing that well? Um, how is that going on, coming along? Well, the scary part is where we have about a 20% gap currently in terms of the number of people coming into the IT field. Mm -hmm. And it's the 20 gap, gap between? Between the number of people who are retiring and the number of people who are becoming okay. interested in the field. So we have 10 million people, as I said, working. Three to four million of those people will be retired within seven to eight years. And we don't have nearly the number of people. So a year ago today, there were 500,000 open IT jobs. Today, there are a million. So the, the number of jobs that are opening just keeps growing and growing, but the number of people coming into the pipeline is shrinking. And we have some real tough myths out there about an IT career. Uh, people think you need a four-year degree. That's not true at all. Uh, in fact, you can get uh, a good job in IT to start with with a, with a little bit of training, a certification, some mm -hmm. job experience. Kids think that they have to be math and science geniuses because STEM has kind of brainwashed them into thinking that all IT jobs require you to know calculus right. and differential equations, which is not true at all. You can succeed in, in IT with no math skills or very little math skills. There's hope for us yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Kids still think all the jobs are outsourced to India. You hear parents a lot of times say, don't go into IT, it's a bad career field. And that there's no job progression, you'll be sitting behind a desk all day. So we have these about five myths that we're trying to overcome here. And they're real big barriers uh, right now. And so we're doing a program called World of IT, which is meant to be given away as a free, fun, interactive program that we'll probably have out sometime in the middle of next year that will educate kids on the great career opportunities. If, you're, if you get A plus certified today, within two years you'll be making $50,000 a year. Mm. If you get Network Plus certified, you'll be making 75000 And if you get Security Plus certified, you'll be making almost $100,000 a year, all with no college education, maybe a two-year uh, uh, community college degree, and no debt. So it's, it's a terrific career, but we need to get more parents and kids knowledgeable about it. All right. Uh, I'm done here. I'm going to get my Security Plus certification. Um, <laughs> do we have any, any audience questions before we, before we wrap up? Any, uh, I have one more, but... Any questions? Oh, we got a question over here. Sorry, we just wait for the mic and just say um, who you are and what your affiliation is. Hi, I'm, I'm John Green. I'm just a contractor. But um, I just wanted to add, too, though, some companies also offer apprenticeships. So sometimes you may or may not have to get certifications. I have friends that don't, and they still make about 150. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. There are plenty of people out there working in IT that don't have certifications, but increasingly employers are looking for certifications instead of degrees. So just recently in the last two years in our annual skills assessment study that we do worldwide, certifications have moved ahead of degrees in terms of importance among hiring agents. So it's true. People can get out there, uh, those jobs, but the, cert the certification can never hurt you. It's always something that, that gives you an edge over over uh, another person that, that's out there. Um, and so we encourage people to do it. Lots of people train for our exams and never take them, mm -hmm. but it certainly helps them, and it certainly helps you in the eye of the employer. Certainly. Any other questions? So I'll end with one last one. Um, Eva, for a younger Todd, what would you tell that person when they were looking at getting into this field today, or you're you know, looking back on that, what would, you, what would your advice be to people that are getting into this now? I think about me when I was younger. We had computers around the house all the time. Mm -hmm. I tore stuff down. I built stuff. I built a color TV between the ages of 10 and 12, uh, a Heath well, kit for those of you old enough to remember what those were, where you actually had to build components, put them together. Um, kids aren't as geeky as they used to be, so it's a little bit harder if your school doesn't have a program. But there are plenty of other things out there. So if, if you have an interest, mm -hmm. if you have uh, a love of technology just in general. There's so many different ways you can enter into it. But um, it's not just about using the mobile device, it's about understanding how it works, how it connects, all these different things. So we're trying to create some mechanisms for, for kind of use cases. So how does, how does a text message work? 
Hmm. What are all the jobs that are involved in making that work? How does Facebook use cloud computing? You know, how does Netflix use Amazon Web Services? And try to create these things that people use on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're a kid and you're thinking about all the different ways you interact with technology, start to investigate all the different jobs that are in that pipeline. Hmm. And I think you'll find that there's a lot of, of really great careers. Technology is a big, big part of so many jobs, whether you're in financial field, medical field, hospitality even. Right. Big users. I mean, uh, I think Hilton is now defining themselves as a technology company, not as a hospitality company. So it's, it's interesting. Um, but I think you have to get out there and, and be more aware of all your options. College is not the only best option for everybody. I think we've seen what that's ended up doing to, to some mm -hmm. kids and the debt that they've accumulated and they come out with a degree that's useless. Um, you know, welders are in short supply. Even people who cut hair, cook food, all these different trades. I encouraged someone recently to become a plumber. And they started their own plumbing business and their, and their, uh, their bookings now are over $300,000 a year. Um, and they're 19 years old. So you, you, college isn't the only best option. So I would start by encouraging people to look at alternative career fields. And technology and IT is just one of them. Beautiful. Todd, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Huh?